Well, hello there, health coaches. Welcome back for another episode. Today, I have such a treat for you guys. I have been hearing your questions again and again. Michelle, how do I start a podcast? Michelle, you have three podcasts. Can you please tell me all your secrets for how to start my own? And I have to admit that it's... um. It's always like a little more complicated than I've wanted it to be, which is why I have Caroline here with us because she is going to break it all down. So let's say hello. Hi, everybody. So glad that you could join us. You guys, Caroline's been helping me with my most recent podcast, my most mm, professional podcast yet. <laughs> and so she, she knows all the ins and the outs, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to help you guys figure out how to start a podcast. It's not as hard as you think. <laughs> good, good. And just tell everybody, because I, I call you like my podcast producer. I don't yeah. know. How, how do you, is that good producer? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I call myself a podcast editor slash producer. And so basically what I do is I help people launch their podcast. And then I also help people maintain their podcast. So editing, publishing the whole nine yards. And that part is actually really key. I know today we're talking about how to start a podcast, but wouldn't right. you say it's actually easier to start a podcast and it's harder to maintain a podcast? Yeah. And I think that's actually really, really key when you're thinking about starting a podcast is you really need to have an honest conversation with yourself and say, okay, do I have time? Can I maintain a schedule? Because consistency is really important uh, to building your audience as a podcaster. And so that's kind of one of those things you really have to think about, like how much time can I give to this? Can I be consistent? Can I keep on a system? Those kinds of things. And usually the answer is yes, because if you really wanna start a podcast, then you'll make room for it in your schedule. I find that the only way it works, and, and we're gonna we're gonna start from the beginning, but I, <laughs> on, a, on a weekly basis, I mean, I do have a podcast that goes out, three different podcasts. They publish approximately weekly, yeah. and the only way to make it happen is to just put it into my non-negotiable calendar appointments right. for myself. Like this is the day I record, or this is the day that I plan, or whatever, and it just happens every day, you know, every week at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's super important with my podcast. We do the same thing. We have a day set aside because I have a co-host and once a month or twice a month, and we just, we put it on the calendar. We don't skip it and we make it happen and we will sit down and record more than one episode because batching also will help you stay on top of things. So yeah, I definitely agree with that for sure. Okay, good. Because I, when I still, I'll just tell you guys about my podcast history really quick. So my first <laughs> podcast, which I do not have anymore, was something that I was like, I can figure this out. I can do this. And what is what was good about the approach, and I, I think you could all, you know, take this part of it anyway. I was like, well, you know what? I don't have a fancy microphone. You know, I don't have a, I don't have one of these Audio Technica things like I have now or mm. anything. I just had my earbuds that came with my phone, and I thought, well, the hell with it. I'm just going to use that. And you know, I don't have any fancy software, but I have GarageBand, and I'm just going to record into that. And you guys, you really can start that easily. Um, yeah. But what I didn't do, and when we were talking about this episode. Um, coming up a lot of a lot of my audience was asking this question Caroline they were saying but how do I come up with content and then I would say come up with mm -hmm. content consistently that's going to create a, a listener base it's going to have people coming back for more like how do you advise people get their content situated yeah so that I think content and tech are kind of the two biggest hang-ups that I found with, find with people who are starting their podcasts and with content what I always recommend you know when we start our businesses um, when we go into a field a career we kind of develop a why right like why am I doing this why do I want to do this what's kind of my mission and I think it's important for your podcast to have that as well why are you starting a podcast uh, what what information are you wanting to share? why is it you wanna reach people in this way? Because it is a very unique way to connect with people, to connect with listeners, to connect with potential clients, those kinds of things. And so really kind of hammering down that why. And then from there, I like to think about, okay, where is my listener right now? What are their pain points? What are they struggling with? What do they wanna hear? What do they wanna know about? And just brain dump a list. And we literally, like I have, I use Trello. I know some people use Asana. There's a, you know, you can even just use a spreadsheet, a piece of paper, a notebook. And I just keep a running list of questions that people are asking me 
in relation to it, things I'm seeing in Facebook groups that people are struggling with. Uh, maybe there's something going on on the news or in the media that has to do with whatever topic I'm podcasting on. And you can actually sometimes take those topics and dissect them into several episodes. You know, there's so many facets to things that you can talk about. And so just having this continuous brain dump, you know, and then think about, okay, what's going on in your life that maybe pertains as well. Because the thing about podcasting is people want to hear from you. That's why they're listening, right? So they want to connect with you. They want to get to know you. And so don't be afraid to share your story as well. But I can guarantee that once you start that process, you will have a lot more to talk about than you thought you would. I like that idea of taking a topic and like breaking it down because so often, especially with health stuff, you know, yeah, I could deliver an hour thing right now about eating less sugar. Right. And that's okay. But I think it would be even more interesting if I broke that down and maybe I did three episodes and each one was like my favorite, like three of my like biggest triggers for sugar or three of my biggest craving you know there'd be one episode about jojo's from trader joe's there'd be another episode about who chocolate bars you know (laughs) and exactly you can you can you can like it's like cells that divide you know you can like take topics and just keep dividing them and dividing them until it actually becomes more interesting and more personal because you now you're getting into like specifics for sure for sure and i think too once you start recording which, you know, that's my number one tip is just sit down and start recording. But once you start recording too, you'll find that more topics will come out of it and come out of it and come out of it. You know, as you're talking about a a topic or like you were saying, like the sugar situation. So you start talking about one food and then, oh my gosh, you remember this one over here. And then all of a sudden you've got a whole new thing, Um, you know, like you've been doing with your podcast. So you'll have episodes about a topic that's broken down, right? Very specific. And then you did a great episode with a recipe. So you were like, what do my listeners want to hear? Where can I meet them right now? What's something actionable I can give them? And, and it was perfect. It was awesome. And so just thinking about too, like, what are some unique things that you can share as well? Right. The format is interesting. And so you brought it up with this newest podcast. All right. Let me just talk about the three podcasts really quick. First, we have the healthy view, which I have two co-hosts and we get on zoom like this and we record and we batch record, like you were talking about, and we do it pretty bare bones. You know, we just have a, a, my assistant just you know, does a tiny bit of editing and that's it, right? It's like a super bare bones. Then, and we pick a topic for each one of those based on just what we feel like, just like right. what we feel like talking about. We kind of agree on what the topics will be. So that one I feel like is my most simple podcast. The other is this podcast, so for Health Coach Power Community, the concept behind it was that I wasn't going to like dream up my own topics. I was going to come on and answer questions from our group because now we have like 8,000 plus members as of this recording. So there's questions like every day, I obviously cannot talk to everybody or I would never do anything else, but I will comb through and pick out the questions that I think are most relevant, most helpful, and then those become topics for our podcast. So um, that's sort of been the concept for this. So it's always different. It's always relevant because you guys are actually right. asking for it. Um, and again, that one is pretty, this one that I'm record- that we are recording right now, this <laughs> podcast is pretty bare bones. Again, not a ton of editing. We just put a little music piece at the beginning and the end. Um, but for She's Got Power, which is my most recent release, and this is what Caroline's been helping me with. One thing that I really wanted to explore was different formats for the content. Mm-hmm. So some of the episodes, it's like, me talking for 15 or 20 minutes. And like, that's the episode. I'm like delivering something to my listeners. Other episodes have a guest. Other episodes have an expert guest. And then we're doing those mini episodes with like a recipe or a quick tip that are Mm -hmm. only like six minutes long. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point too, is don't get hung up on thinking that you need to have a podcast episode that's 45 minutes. You know, instead think about, how much time do you really need to share your content? Because sometimes a six minute episode is perfect. And sometimes a 20 minute episode is perfect. And so I think just kind of taking away all the constraints of like what we think a podcast episode should be. And you'll find that it'll be a lot easier because you'll kind of take that pressure off of yourself. It has also really helped to not have to have a guest for every single episode because that's a lot of work. Yeah, it is. And honestly, um, as someone who's edited, like I edit 20 plus podcasts a week, um, I really love, especially when 
it's somebody's podcast like yours and you're connecting with them on a specific topic, like I want to hear their point of view. And I sometimes feel like that gets lost when you're doing interviews all the time. Now, sometimes the interview works. It depends on the podcast, right? But if you're definitely having a podcast to share more of yourself and your story and your business, then I would highly encourage doing some solo episodes because I feel like it really helps the listeners connect with you better. And of course, as health coaches, you guys, we are selling ourselves, yeah. right? We don't really want to sell the guest or get people over to the guest's website necessarily. You know, like right. if you're, if you're going to go through the effort, let's talk a little bit about like the strategy for your business, because it's a lot of effort, you know, and time yes. and you, you, know, you put work into having a podcast go out regularly. You want to make sure that there's a return, like a monetary return in your business. Otherwise it's just a big hobby which could also be okay. But like in my business, I like right. to see, yeah, the ROI. So, um, so having episodes that are more about me, right. And my business, and I actually tell a lot of client stories in my, yeah. she's got power podcast. And that has actually started to drive people somewhere where they can, you know, download my freebie, give me yes. an email address and be invited into a consultation call with me. And it's working. It's working. Good. It's the good news. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, really key. Like going back to that whole, why are you wanting to start a podcast in the first place? So if you're a health coach and you're wanting to build your coaching business and connect with more people, obviously you're going to have to use this as a kind of funnel. So you want to think about what do you want them to do after they finish listening to the episode? And so it kind of becomes a part of your marketing strategy. So what's going on in the marketing world? How can you tie that in with an episode? You know, where are you going to direct them to when the episode is over? Make sure you have, you know, like you have a freebie or be sure to join our email list for more tips and tricks, that kind of thing. You want to make sure that you're not just leaving them hanging. So really thinking about it as being part of your funnel. Yes. And I never did this like years ago. I didn't even conceive of that. But now, like as I'm starting to plan season two for uh, the She's Got Power podcast, I'm like, okay, I want to run a group program in the spring. So what episodes are going to yes. release when so I can start teasing it and I can promote it and I can drive people to whatever free event that I'm going to do. And all that takes some advanced planning, but it's like so worth it because then all of your efforts are going like mm -hmm. to the same place instead of just saying, Hmm, I got to record something today. What should I record about? Oh, hmm. oh, yeah. That's, that's the worst too. Cause I feel like the minute that that happens is the minute the episode is not your favorite. You know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of like, Oh, this wasn't as, as meaty as they usually are. But two, I think people get hung up. Like they don't want to be too salesy on their podcasts. And, um, I, somebody told me a long time ago, if you don't share it, nobody will buy it. And so don't be afraid to, you know, talk about what you are doing in your podcast because the people that are listening are there for a reason. And podcast is a really good way to build that kind of trust factor. So it's really important to make sure that you're including, you know, that marketing strategy with it. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't make offers, you're not gonna make any money, you guys. That's just how it yeah. works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you can mix it up. I mean, like sometimes I'll have a pretty outright promotion going on. And even on this right. podcast, you guys will hear me say maybe two, three weeks in a row, like sign up for this webinar, sign up for this training. Um, and then other times it's a lighter touch and it's a freebie or sometimes it's nothing at all, but you can mix it up. Sometimes you put it at the front of the episode. Sometimes you put it at the end of the episode so that people don't just tune out for the first 10 minutes or fast forward through the first right. you know, you're just right. talking about your business. Yeah. Yeah. Or the middle is a great place too. Some people like the middle. Some people don't. Um, you'll find that a lot of like paid sponsorships, they'll want what they call a mid roll. Uh, but really it just, it depends on what works best for the format. And I think that's really key. You know, where does it make sense to you to have that promo? How does it weave into the episode? You know, just, you don't have to put it, there's no, I like to say this all the time. Podcasting is really the wild west. It's still a young media. It's still growing, which is why it's a great time to jump into it. And so you really can make your own rules. Like there are no set standards, you know, that an episode doesn't have to be this way. So you can be unique and do whatever works best for you. So fun. I started blogging like, I don't know, 12 years ago or something. And that's when blogging was the wild west. Yeah. And now it's hard. You see it's every people's blogs are so polished and perfect and sponsors yeah. and this, and it's intimidating, but podcasting is like still in those early stages. So I agree with Caroline, but you yeah. can kind of get in now and 
and work it and find your voice. And like in the next yes. five, 10 years, you'll be the one that has like the, the star podcast that all the newbies are looking up at. Right. And, and that's super key too. Like it does not have to be perfect out of the gate because if you want it to be perfect out of the gate, you're going to keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. I cannot tell you how many people I've talked to who have been planning their podcast for over a year. So just sit down and start recording and you will evolve and it'll get better as it goes. And that's totally okay. 100%. Okay. We've got a couple of questions here um, let, uh, from Andrea. She's asking how often should a podcast come out? And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you think. Is there, a, does everybody do weekly or what's going on? Weekly is pretty standard. Bi-weekly is also common. I think um, whatever makes sense for you, obviously, as you're starting out, you know, if it makes more sense to be bi-weekly, then, you know, release a couple episodes a month. But the main thing is no matter what schedule you pick, you have to be consistent. So if your listeners are expecting an episode to come out every other Tuesday, you better have an episode coming out every other Tuesday, because if they start to see it's not happening, they'll stop listening. Mm -hmm. So really you can choose whatever schedule. I do think weekly tends to do better as far as download numbers go, but that's really not something you need to be worrying about when you first start your podcast. So find a schedule that works for you, but be consistent. And one thing that has helped so much is also allowing myself to take breaks. Yes. <sighs> and someone gave me that advice early on. They're like, definitely do not plan to put out 52 weekly episodes a year because you will just burn right out. Right. So like with She's Got Power, we have like, I think 14 episodes in season one. And there's no rule about that either. You could nope. have as many or as few as you want. And then we're going to break over the holidays. I'll probably be recording behind the scenes and then start releasing them again in the new year. But like, Oh, it's such an exhale to like yeah. have a couple weeks off. Are there any rules or uh, uh, you know, just things to keep in mind when we're doing breaks? No, um, I mean, I usually tell people, you know, maybe let your audience know that you're going on a break. So if you're not doing seasons and there's no rule that you have to do seasons, our podcast just, we're just running it. I think we're on like episode 132. Um, but we have taken breaks over the summer. We've taken breaks in August when our kids start school. And then we usually take a break around the holidays, holidays because honestly, uh, you know, we find that our listener kind of taper off around the holidays anyways. So there's no point in killing ourselves trying to get out new content. And so we might just put out like a little five minute episode that says, hey guys, we're going to take a little break. We hope you have a great holiday. We'll be back in the new year. Uh, but, you know, just communicating that with your listeners, but there really is, again, there's no rule. And so yes, please take breaks and build them into your schedules because you will burn out for sure. You will burn out. Another thing that we've done on this podcast, like when I was away in Thailand last spring, I was like, yeah, I could do a live episode from Thailand. But I'm <laughs> so glad I didn't because first of all, it was vacation. Second of all, the time difference is crazy. Yeah. And so instead I just said, okay, we're going to take a break from doing the live episodes, but I pre-recorded some like bonus episodes. Yes. And we great. released those. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. And when you get further down the line too, you can even release like best of, so mm -hmm. you could like re-release an old episode, put best of in front of the title and, you know, be releasing like throwbacks or what we call them. And so there's a lot of ways to kind of get around that, but I love the bonus episode idea. Having just short little episodes to release is great. And again, you know, that's something that you thought of that you did that was unique to you. You were like, I'm going to do this. And that's exactly how podcasting is. So if you come up with a unique way to release your content, go for it. There's no rules. So let's get into the technology piece a little bit yes. and all like those bits and pieces behind <laughs> the scene. So I think yeah. all of us are savvy enough that with some basic, basic equipment, we could record something, right? You guys, like you could sit yeah. down with your phone or your yep. computer and you could record your voice saying something. So let's pretend you have an MP3 <laughs> and then what on earth do we have to do with that MP3 in order to see it on iTunes? Yeah, so uh, let's talk a second about editing. So you can totally edit yourself. Do not think that you need to hire an editor. Um, if you have GarageBand on, a, on your Mac, that is a great place to start. It's really intuitive. It's actually how I started. It's drag and drop. Uh, and you don't even have to cut anything out if you don't want to. It's really up to you, the style that you want your podcast to be. Um, if you don't have GarageBand, there's another one called Audacity, which mm -hmm. is free that you can 
can download. And that one is a little bit more complicated, but there's tons of videos on YouTube. Again, it's not that difficult um, once you kind of get into it. Uh, the other things, kind of elements that you'll want your episode to have, I love an intro with a little bit of music. You just need some royalty-free music, which literally, if you Google royalty-free music, a bunch of websites will pop up um, and you can just put those together in GarageBand again, like we talked about. Um, and then an outro is also a really good piece to have, a call to action. What do you want people to do? when they're done listening. And you can just kind of tack that on as you're recording, or you can have a separate standard outro that you do. But I promise you, you can open GarageBand, you can open Audacity, you can put these together, okay? You can do it, I believe in you. Uh, once you have your episode and it's done and you're ready to go, you have your MP3, you're going to need what is called an RSS feed host. And my favorite is Libsyn. I love them because they are kind of on the front of the podcasting industry. They tend to get a lot of the destinations before some of the other people do. And their, you know, kind of back end stuff is really, really good for podcasting. I won't get too technical on you, which I can do very easily. So, um, <laughs> but you'll need a host. And this host is where you're going to actually upload your episodes give them a title, maybe put in a summary paragraph, some important links you want people to follow. You can actually give the episode a website. So when we were talking about redirecting people to you after they've listened to the episode, you can actually put your website in there. So when they click on episode website, it'll take them right there. And so you're actually going to schedule and publish that episode there. And then that is going to distribute it to all the destinations, all the places that it needs to go. iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, tune in. There's a lot of them. And that feed, it'll give you like a, a special URL. So it'll be, you know, www.libsyn.com slash your podcast name slash some number slash RSS. Okay. So that's your RSS feed URL. And then you're going to take that URL and you're actually going to say, Hey, iTunes, can you please put this on on Apple Podcasts for me. And if you literally Google submit podcast to iTunes, a website will come up, you'll log in with your account, you'll put in that URL, and then they will approve it. And it'll be up on iTunes. And then you never have to do that again. All you ever have to do is upload it to your host, which in this case, we've been talking about Libsyn. And there's a lot of hosts out there. Um, but I would, if, if you're serious about doing this, you know, having it be a long-term thing, then I would definitely look at something like Libsyn for sure. Okay. So I'm going to spell that out for people. Cause I know they're going to be like, Lib what? It's L-I-B-S-Y-N. Yeah. Libsyn.com. Um, and that's where we host my podcast yep. and it's a service that you will need to pay for. It is the, yes. the, the smaller, depending on how many episodes and how long your episodes are. If you like re release three hour episodes every right. week, you're going to have gonna to pay, pay for yeah. a bigger plan, but yeah. it depends on how big they are. You know, you can get away with like $5 a month, I want to say. Yeah, five, I usually around the $15 a month mark is kind of where people land, um, 15 to 25 is kind of, I would say average, because once you start getting into those 20, 30 minute episodes, they take up a little bit more storage. Mm -hmm. And so basically what you're paying for is storage and that resets every month with, with Libsyn. So that's what you're paying for. So the right. bigger the file size, the more storage you need, the more you're going to pay basically. But if you're like just dipping your toe in and you're like, I'm going to release like one episode every yeah. other week and it's going to be like 10 minutes long, you can do this very cheaply. You can always upgrade. And exactly. then like logging into Libsyn, like I can see the stats for this podcast. Like every month we have like a thousand more downloads than we did the month before. And it's like, right. yes. So great to see those numbers. Yeah, it's really cool too. And what I love too about podcasts is the episodes, they, they're there forever, right? They're just hanging out there forever. And so when new people find you like three months, four months, six months down the road, they're going to start at the beginning and listen through all your episodes. And so it's really cool to see how your podcast episodes age. And that's, that's really key too. Like don't get hung up on the numbers because as you release more episodes, as the age of your podcast episodes grows, so will their download numbers. Absolutely. It's like anything, right? It's just yeah. like building your mailing list or whatever, your Instagram following. We all start with like one follower who is our sister. And then from there, <laughs> it grows and, it, and it, you know, it tends to kind of have exponential growth if you're consistent. Mm -hmm. If you are consistent. It's the key word here. 
<laughs> yes, key keyword here. So I know, so that I know it's like a little bit of like weird technology there. Like you're gonna need the hosting with the with Libsyn or something like Libsyn, and then you have to have Libsyn talk to iTunes to get your RSS feed up on iTunes. But even yeah. if you have to hire someone to just help you with that little piece once mm -hmm. it's done. It's done. Exactly. Yeah. You never have to mess with Google Play or iTunes or any of those ever again. Once you've submitted it, it's there. It'll live there forever as long as you keep your, your lips and feed current, your lips and account current, I should say. Okay. So nerdy question. And I know yeah. it's not the most important thing. We already talked about how you can record with your earbuds, Yeah. but what is your like favorite, favorite dream microphone? You know, okay, it's so funny you asked me this because I am not a fancy microphone girl. So you know those pretty Yeti microphones that everybody loves to take pictures of? Yes. Those are actually my least favorite. Um, they have the worst sound, you guys. I can't even, like I can, like when somebody sends me their files and I listen to it, I'm like, oh, it's a Yeti, I can hear it. <laughs> but I literally use this guy. I bought him three years ago for like $40 on Amazon. And he has worked out great. It's called a blue snowball. And so I think that's key. Like you don't have to spend a lot of money on a fancy microphone. And then you have, which microphone do you have, Michelle? It's Audio Technica something or other, uh, ATR yes, 2100. ATR. Yeah, those are great too. So I think just don't go spend $100 on the Yeti is basically my my best microphone advice. Yeah, I mean, like some of them are nicer looking. I don't like how this one looks, but right. um, but it works. And I think it's like, $50 or something. Yeah. And even if you just like, we started out just with, you know, the headphones with a microphone on it. And the key to using these is to hold the microphone still. Otherwise you'll get a lot of scratching. And so if this is all you have right now and you're ready to jump in, then use this. No worries. Also, you guys, yesterday I was in a pinch. Um, I needed to record just a little like two second snippet for an episode. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try my iPhone voice memos situation. And I did. And it actually was really great. So if you want to just use the voice memos on your iPhone, that works really great too. Kind of amazing. Yeah. All right. We're running short on time, but first I want to do one more question. But before that, I want to urge all of you guys to go check out Caroline's website, see what she's all about. She's at wildhomepodcasting.com. And if you go to wildhomepodcasting.com slash newsletter, tell everybody a little bit about what they will get. Yeah. So when you sign up for the newsletter, I have a free podcast launch checklist, which is literally a checklist that just tells you all the things you need before you launch your podcast. And so definitely go check that out. And we have a lot of resources for people who haven't launched yet. That's something we talk a lot about on the blog. So be sure to check that out as well. Awesome. And if you check out my new podcast, She's Got Power, you can find it on iTunes. You can find it all over the place. You can see the magic that Caroline works <laughs> on my sometimes not so great audio weaving in the music, making it sound great. Everyone who has listened to it has been like, oh my God, you sound so professional. And I'm like, I literally record in my like unfinished basement with like not great acoustics, yeah. but it comes out, it can come out really nice. Yeah. And I, I think that's so important that you bring up the location because I think a lot of times when we think podcasting, we think podcast studio, I need to get soundproof foam boards and everything. And you don't. When I record, I record in this room at this desk. You don't need anything special. So you can get started today if you wanted to. See, no excuses, you guys. And I want to touch on this one last topic because Tara's asking, how do podcasts get linked to Facebook? So I think the, the topic here is really like how to repurpose your podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I don't know if you would consider this linked to Facebook, but I'm just going to describe how I am trying to get the most mileage possible out of my, out of this podcast. And, and, and then Carolyn, if you have other ideas for how people are doing something similar, you let us know. Yeah. So every week, as you guys know, two o'clock Eastern time, I am broadcasting live into the health coach power community, Facebook group. I'm doing a Facebook live. That's how it's quote unquote linked to Facebook. So you guys get to watch as we're recording it live, like we're doing right now. Sometimes I just do this directly through Facebook if it's just me, because Caroline and I are doing this together. We're actually on Zoom together and then Zoom broadcasts to Facebook. But in any case, it's just like doing a Facebook Live, except I'm also recording it on my end. So I have the original audio file. And then we take that audio file, we do a little bit of editing to it, and that's what goes to Libsyn and to all of the podcast 
providers like iTunes. The other thing that we do is we take this video and we upload it to YouTube. So you can also find Health Coach Power Community channel on YouTube. So some people prefer to watch and there's like a library there of all of our old episodes, actually like a really good place to go find old episodes because you can just see them so easily. Sometimes it's easier than scrolling through iTunes. So we're kind of all over the place because once you create content, you can repurpose and repurpose. And then we even take the video and edit it down to 10 minutes and upload it to IGTV, which ends up mm. on my Instagram feed and boom, bada bing, bada bang, we're all over the place. What else should I be doing? <laughs> no, that's that's so great. Uh, I have a couple clients who actually use the videos from their interviews for YouTube and have found that to work really well for them. Um, and in fact, if you're hosting with Libsyn, you can actually uh, send your podcast episode with just a picture uh, to YouTube as well. So there's also that option. But I think you really hit the nail on the head here. Like you're doing all this work, you're creating this podcast. So you want to make sure that you reuse this content everywhere. So it needs to be on your blog. It needs to be on your website. You should post about it on Instagram, in which you do with the little audiograms, which are like little audio clip snippets that you can use. Um, and you don't even have to do that. Just posting it everywhere and then even breaking that down. So like we talked about breaking topics down, how can you break that podcast episode up into more content to share? You know, whether that's a Facebook post or Instagram post, and that's going to help build your listenership as well, but that's going to save you so much time because now you're not having to write blog posts, you know, produce content for your podcast, think of Instagram posts, tie it all together and it'll be so smooth. <laughs> You brought up the one that I forgot. Of course, we also published this to my blog. Yes. So if you go to healthcoachpower.com, you'll see for this episode, the video of Caroline and I at the top, then there'll be an option to listen to just the audio. And then we actually submit the audio to a service called Temi. It's T-E-M-I. What's the other one? Um, there's another transcription service I can't remember right now that's very popular, but Rev. Yes. Rev is a big one. Rev. And it's cheap. You know, it's like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's like a couple, it's like 30 cents or something a minute. Sometimes it can go up to a minute depending on how precise you want them. But yeah, exactly. So we do that every week. So then everything that we're talking about today will be in a transcript, which would be nice because then you can easily find what you're looking for when you're like, yeah. what did Caroline say about iTunes? But it's also nice because then search engines are actually able to crawl all of the content that was part of your podcast and help your blog post and, and your podcast come up in search results. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so, so important. So like the one thing I tell business owners and particularly who are having, who have podcasts is to be sure you're using that as a blog post on your website, just hands down, like you need to be doing it. And if you're hosting on Libsyn, uh, for each episode, a little embed code comes up with a player that you can just pop that in your website. It's really easy. And a player will actually be right there on your website. And if anybody clicks that and listens to it on your website, it's going to count towards your downloads too. So good. So you guys make sure you go to wildhomepodcasting.com slash newsletter. So you can get your checklist so you can get started. And even yes. if you just start with a voice memo on your phone, recording and getting used to hearing your own voice, which can yes. be weird. Yes. It can be strange. You'll get over it though. I promise yeah. it takes about three years. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be well on your way. And I would love to know about any podcasts that you are starting. So please leave a comment, send an email, let me know about what podcast ventures you're up to. Cause I always like to support our community. Caroline, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Thank you so much for letting me come and talk about my favorite topic. I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, maybe we could do it again another time with the more advanced topics, but first we got to get everybody going. Yes, for sure. Start recording today. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it, you guys. All right. I'll see you next week, everybody. Take care.